Welcome to another episode of Chatting with Stacks. I'm your host, Bill Stacks, and today I got Bobby Luisi. And I ended up uh, falling through the cracks. And when I got, I think it was 2007 or 8, I got resentenced. Uh, they took 47 months off. So I went from wow. 235 months to 15, 8. 15 wow. years, 8 months. So yeah. they had to drop that 47 months on the leadership. So right after you, you're about to get released. What do they say you want to go in the witness protection program? No, it wasn't there for me because I wasn't an informant. Yeah, so what, how, what? No, they just, they, you know, as far as they, they were just going to let me out the door and maybe give me a bus ticket or my people pick me up. But what happened at the time, um, they came to right at the end. I was in Allenwood getting ready to go home. I had a month or two left. And, and they, uh, this is the feds, right? It's the feds. Mm -hmm. They came to me over the artwork for the Ghana Art Museum, the robbery in 1990. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Bobby Garanti had told me something about it. He's from Connecticut. No, Bobby Gentile's from Canada. Oh, yeah, Gentile. Gentile. He's, he's from Boston. He passed away recently, Gentile, I think. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. No, Gentile did, Bobby? I, I, I heard he did. No, Bobby Garanti sure. passed away, I think. Yeah. I, I, Bobby Gentile. One of them that. did. Yeah, the, Bobby art, Garanti. the artwork. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, they came to me. I told them that. And in and, and that same time period, the uh, Boston FBI, first the Connecticut FBI came over the robbery. Yeah. Because they were investigating Bobby Gentile. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, Bobby never mentioned the artwork to me. I don't know nothing about it from Bobby, but Bobby Garanti, you know. But I guess Bobby Gentile had informants, other informants talking to him about the artwork. Yeah. And one of them happened to be Bobby Garanti's wife. This is what this all started from. Yeah. People think that I told him, I didn't say nothing about it. Yeah. And when they came to me over the artwork, Bobby Garanti already passed away a few years ago. I didn't hurt anybody. You know? Yeah, yeah. So I figured, let me get on this bandwagon. Yeah. And uh, make a long story short, there was another person they caught, Rico Ponzo. They brought him back to Boston. He was on the run for 13 years, you know. And uh, they came to me to help on that case. And I said I never committed a crime with him. But they told me I was getting subpoenaed to that case. They wanted to know where I was going so I could get subpoenaed. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I told them, I said, I don't know what I'm doing right now. So between the both, the Connecticut and the Boston guys. So at this time, are you out? Or are you, no, I'm you're, in. You're I'm still in. in. Yeah. 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 And they came. They said, listen, we'll put you in the witness protection program. Mm -hmm. Change your name. You're all this. And, you know, what do you think? I said, yeah, I'll do it. I said, yeah. I don't want to go back to Boston right now. I don't think I was ready to come back to Boston at that time. So you're in prison when they're when they're making this deal. With you. Yeah, yeah, I'm in prison. And the deal was I wasn't hurting anybody. Bobby Garanti was dead. Yeah. And while I was in there, they they called me over this hour. Bobby Gentile was going to trial. We want to know about that case. You're yeah, from Connecticut. yeah, yeah. I know all about. And it. And they said, "Would you help us with Bobby Gentile?" I said, "No, I ain't gonna help you." Too. You know, I yeah. said, he's my friend. He's a May guy. He never told me nothing about no artwork. And I don't know anything about his case. I was in prison. How am I going to help you? Yeah. I yeah. said, please don't call me again. They didn't. Yeah. They, they, they didn't call. And they says, well, you know, I says, you want to work something out? I got 10 people in Boston that you're going to have to move because you want me to ride on a May guy. Yeah. Are you willing to do that? He said, no, don't call me no more. I think that was the conversation at the end. Yeah. And they stopped calling me over. Oh, rat on this guy. Yeah. I'm not a rat to start with. Yeah. And I did take the shot at uh, Rico because I wanted to kill him. I hated the kid. You know, he was Paulie's friend, though. I don't want to talk too bad. <laughs> and hate's a bad word, but that was back in the day. You know, that was back in the day. Yeah. You know, I don't hate anybody now, but at that time. And then when I got out, like I said, when they, they wanted me to go on the stand, because I was the boss at the time, and they just wanted me to give the structure of the mob at that time because I was the boss, and that's basically what I did. But when I got on the stand, I got attacked, obviously got attacked. Oh, uh, I'm a, oh by the by the prosecutor. By, the, pro by uh, the, the defense attorney, all that bullshit. Oh, they were going in. Oh, they you. came at me high with my father. Everything. So... But so when your father was murdered, did it did that affect you? Like, were you like, I'm gonna get revenge for that? No, 
or where? No. Was it a lot of tension on the streets? Were you thinking that people were like, how did the whole thing transpire? Was it? It was mob related. I'm it, just yeah. gonna say this: it was mob related, but it was more of a personal thing. Yeah, and there were two families involved, and there was enough harm done, and there was gonna be no more harm. And that it's a it's a tragic story. I'm sorry for your loss. My father was a gangster. My brother, you know, um, I, it really hurts losing my cousin Anthony uh, in that. He was a great kid, really loved him, you know, but things happen. Yeah. You know, Sir, when you're in the witness protection program, do they give you money to um, live? Like how, how is the process? You lack nothing. You lack nothing? No. You live comfortable? No, no. They don't give you any exorbitant amounts of money, you know, but they make sure you get started. So that's do, what the program's about. Do they give you a license? Do you got to take the driver's license test? Yeah, you got a license, passport, new birth certificate, social security number. You now, got the whole do you thing. have to take a test, like the driver's license test, or they just give you the license? Oh, I had to because you got to remember, I was gone for 14 years. Yeah. So I had to do that. Yeah, yeah. It's not that I had a license. They could have. But so they give, over. they give you a license, but they give it to you in a different name. A different name. So the government is really in control with what they give you, the social security card and all this. They're giving it to you, right? Yeah. You're not going out to get it. No. It's social security office. <laughs> and you don't do nothing until they tell you to do it. You know? But see, with me, I hit the street running. I got a job right away in construction because that's my background. Yeah. Got a good job down there. You know? you know, They got my vehicle for me right away. I was working right away. I'm saving the money they're giving me. You know, it, it, it was working out good. The only part down there was do you, date, do you date a woman while you're in witness protection program? Because, like, you got to lie to them about your I name. got married. I got married to a woman. Did, so, did you tell her who you really were? I, not in the beginning. What? Not in the beginning? Well, it's funny now because you see my place. I got OCD. Everything yeah. got to be perfect, yeah. you know? Yeah. So the first time Julie comes over my apartment, I have a beautiful bedroom apartment, I could be loose you know, all the yeah, bullshit, yeah. you know. Yeah. All brand new, everything was brand new, not a picture on the wall. <laughs> she walks in, I was this is a whole problem. There's something wrong. What are you doing here? She told me, you know. And uh, I just started laughing. How long were you there at that point? I was there several months before I met her, because I was dating a girl before her, Denise. And um Beautiful red-headed girl. And then I met my wife in church, you know, and uh, I don't know, I, I knew right away with Julie. Uh, the marriage didn't last, but that was my fault. Yeah. You know, I just got out of prison. I this is never in took Memphis, that on. right? They, this is in Memphis. We live in Cordova, right outside of Memphis. So you went from prison right to Memphis? Yeah, to Cordova, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man, because uh, that when I first started doing research on you, that's where it sent me to yeah. Memphis. Yeah. And uh, I thought you were still there. And I was like, I got to try to find this guy. But how do you find someone in the witness protection yeah. program? Well, I'll tell you, I loved it down there. I mean, as soon as I got down there, I was living in a complex. They had a community room. I read that. I started a Bible study. Uh, then when I met Julie, she lived next door to a bishop, Bishop Coleman. Mm -hmm. He had a church, Faith Keepers Ministry. He read my book. Uh, at that time, it was named The Last Generation by Alonzo Esposito, but I just changed it to God Squares Revealed. Yeah. And he read the book and says, I want you to teach. He says this, I see it in the book, I want you to teach in my church. Uh, several pastors wanted me to teach in their church at the time, but I went with uh, Pat Bishop Coleman because I felt the spirit on the man. Yeah. And it was a black church, it was a beautiful church, the people were great. But at that time, there was a lot of just problems going on. Mm -hmm. personal problems that I didn't feel that I should be up on a podium so teaching anybody. When you married your wife, did you marry her in the government name that they gave you? Yeah, Alonzo Esposito. Yeah. And then after that, you you tell her, listen, I gotta tell you something, or do you tell No, her? I told her before that. How, what was that conversation like? No, she says, I know. She just told me, I know. She, she knew. Said, What's that guy like you doing down here? That's the first question everybody asked. 
What are you doing down there? Yeah. Yeah. But the first thing they want to know, why, why are you here? Well, I'm a pastor, which I wasn't lying about that. Yeah. And I wanted to come down to the Bible Belt. That was my story. Yeah. You know? And I was ordained, and I was a pastor. Yeah. So. So where did you get ordained and all that? Did you do all that while you were in prison, or was that? No. I While I was in prison, I got a degree in theology. Mm -hmm. I have a bachelor's degree. I earned 226 credits, and I graduated with a 3.8 GPA. Yeah. And uh, at that time, my mother had a church, and Pastor Lewis was, well, it was actually Lewis's church at the end. But my mother and some of the women in the neighborhood started a church in 1980, Born Again Christian, charismatic church. So while I'm in prison, now I'm sending them all my teachings, Showing him what we're doing, selling him the certificates because I was teaching theology classes now. Yeah. He's seen I got my degree. Uh, actually, him and his wife, uh, Lewis's wife, put me, Michelle put me through another course. And I was really deep in study when I was in prison, you know. So for all that good work and effort, he made me a, a assistant pastor at that church. Wow. It sent me the letter and everything that I needed. So you were working with them while you were in prison, but they knew who you were. Yeah. So they knew who you really were. Yeah. But they knew that you were going to get this new name and yeah. all that. Okay. Yeah. Now it makes sense. So then when you get out, you're... So, what, so when you tell your wife, <laughs> listen, I'm not, I'm not really named. It's not my name. 